We're back here. Um, we cooked compressors, we cooked some oil, right? Not your average cooking show, um, but we found some really cool things, which I'm sure you've already seen the video for. And how Let's, many days has it been? We did this originally on Friday. Now it's again, we're back on Wednesday. Yes, yeah, so several days. I did the timeline. Yes, and so um, with leaving these oil samples, we have run across something that we did not expect. Um, I love science and this is actually really cool. Uh, so we've talked about oils and, and what they are made of essentially in their breakdown. And we've talked about before, and, and I don't understand the full molecular chemistry behind it, right? I'll, I'll call somebody, um, but you've got POE and you've got PVE. And the concerns there sometimes, especially on, on roofs that have rubber membranes or, or different types of specialized membranes, we don't wanna leave those oils on the roof. We don't wanna tip our compressors over. We don't wanna spill oil on the roof and just leave it. We wanna clean it up. And the reason behind that is because it can actually eat away at that roof. And right. what we discovered here is that um, and our oils actually ate through our plastic uh, in, in a very short amount of time. And so, uh, you know, we did some research and homework on it and we found out there's actually a word for this, yep. uh, which we can see here. It's, it's actually, it's, it's crazing, which is something I have never heard of ever. Uh, it's crazing, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but to, to show you, so we have these clear Petri dishes here. Um, and this one is actually straight out of the box. No issues, no deformation. But what we found is, is these streaking, right? Not just any streaking, but specific lines on the actual Petri dishes themselves that show you there's kind of like these, these micro cracks, right? That's kind of the only way to look at. This looks like, you know, when I've dropped my phone a few times off the nightstand um, <laughs> and thought I didn't crack it, but I actually did, uh, you know, it resulted in, in what we kind of see here, which is just really cool. And as you're reflecting that side or moving that side, the, the light's reflecting and I see even more cracks than I didn't see before, or not cracks, crazing Crazy. that we see before. And one of them is going from one side all the way to the other and they're going at different angles. So they're not all the exact same angles. So it's not just a manufacturing, it's actually how it's affecting the plastic. And some of them are deeper than others. Well, and what we've learned is, is that this, this crazing effect that you see here, which looks like shattered glass, um, is not what we would call cracking. You say, okay, well, that's cracking, right? I've cracked many phones in my lifetime. <laughs> that's cracking. And so we've learned that, so cracking, yes, it looks like it. However, cracking would mean that, that the material has completely separated from both sides. And what you can do is when you feel these and you actually touch them on, on one side, the outside shell, as opposed to where the oil came into contact, there is no cracking. There's no, there's no marks, there's no stress points. And so the term for it is actually crazing and the crazing is is apparently from what we've learned just now and we're not scientists by no means is the actual absorption of the oil into the molecular level of the plastic causing it to swell and create these lines that we see on the screen here because here's another sample and this is not just you say okay which oil did this right because i'm never using it ever again and uh it's actually two oils we had the poe sample and the PVE oil samples both do the same exact things in the same uh, structure. I mean, they, they, they look identical in the direction of the cracks, the lengths of the cracks, when I invite crazing, a uh, new term that everybody's learning today. And it looks like, again, it, like shattered glass. It's, it does. It looks like ice crystals almost. Like if you have, if you're just starting to freeze a top of water, it has, it has those lines on there. And that makes sense because you're changing the structure of the plastic. Yeah, and so what we learned is, is that because the actual oil has now completely, and I don't get to say this word a lot, impregnated the plastic, right? On the surface, this, this PVC, this clear plastic that we see here, it's caused it to swell, creating these lines that we can distinctly see. And, and what's happening now is apparently over time, as it starts to, to create these, this disassociation of bonds on a molecular level, it's gonna go deeper and deeper and deeper. And so we're gonna get this separation that's taking place. And as obviously as it separates more and more and more, right. it'll get deeper down into the, to the actual crevices of this to the point where it's actually going to cause the plastic to crack and completely separate. Uh, why should we be concerned about this, Ty? Well, in my mind, I'm thinking we have drain lines and drain pans and evaporator cools that leak. So yes. if we have a leaking evaporator cool and we got oil coming out with that, What's happening to that drain pan is that drain pan PVC. I know there's different types that different yep. companies use. And then we also have our PVC drain lines. Yep. And I've always heard to keep the PVE 
oil or peewee oil away from drain lines. And I just assumed, incorrectly, yeah. that it was the acid, the, the moisture turns into acid, the acid was causing it. I didn't realize it was the peewee oil itself that was causing damage to that. So this is something completely new that I learned and it's super exciting. Yes, well, and so to that point, I was like, okay, well, these are two different oils, right? Two different uh, lubricating oils that we have here, both PVE and also PoE. And you'll notice here, they have similar letters, right? The P at the beginning and the E at the end. And it turns out that it's actually, you know, it's a couple things, but from a general science perspective, it's the ether or the ester in those names from the chemical reaction that's taking place that we see here of actual brittlement of plastic. Right? And it's not just all plastics. From what we found in our research that we did, it's, it's PVC, right? So you've got your Schedule 40, Schedule 80, anything that's, that's poly polyvinyl chloride. Yes, that's correct. Plastic. And it's also ABS plastic. Now, ABS plastic, from what I understand, is something that is extremely strong and durable. I remember when it started coming out, a lot of things that we used on the field, you know, it was impact resistant. You could drop it. You could smash it. You could stand on it. It was really structurally sound. However, if it comes into contact with this over time, it's not so structurally sound. Interesting. Because we're getting this, we're getting the separation on a yeah. molecular level where now the plastic doesn't want to hold together anymore. And so right. this kind of is, is very alarming to me because now the question that you were asking me earlier was um, what happens when you have a leak in an evaporator coil, right? right? And so a slow leak over time creates a, a oil residue on the coil, which fills the drain pan. Well, where does the condensation go in a normal heat exchanger in a Florida market that's full of humidity? Yeah, right it goes outside. down the drain line. Yeah. What's the drain line made of? PVC. PVC. That's right. And so we're literally <laughs> washing an oil down our drain lines that is eating the drain line from inside. And so what does that create? And, that, and this takes me back to now that I'm thinking about this you know, live here. Um, I've seen white slurry plastic from drain lines over time that is kind of degraded from the surface. And I'm wondering, it could was it be. associated with this, right? It could be. What kind of long-term damage am I talking about here? And again, this doesn't eat all plastics. We're talking PVC and ABS. Yeah, you have a jug that you put your oil in and it was actually not breaking that one down. It, no. was, it was holding together, at least from what we could see visually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now it makes me want to take a piece of PVC pipe and submerge it in oil and see how quickly it degrades to the point where it, it breaks away. To. No, we have to. So to that point, I also had a, a VRF indoor unit uh, mm -hmm. whose brand will remain nameless, uh, which I stored away in my garage that I fixed a leak on. Eventually I was gonna hang it up on the garage. A wife doesn't like it, it's too ugly. I get it. Uh, I can't fight her on that. And so we took it out today to, to do a evacuation class with our technicians. And we found that the entire thing completely disintegrated uh, wow. when we took it out. And this coil was saturated in PVE oil from the leak, so much so that you can wow. see the discoloration across the coil. And so when we took it out, I would think, okay, well, maybe it was sitting in the sun or maybe someone sprayed it with coil cleaner and then they put it away. Right. I was the technician that changed it out nine years ago. And so with that, we, we look at it and we see that it has literally brittled the entire infrastructure of that, 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 wow. um, from the, the oil. Unit. From the oil. From the oil. That's... From oil and long-term exposure. Right. I took it out and it completely fell apart. That's amazing. And so it's like, <laughs> wow. See, I, would, I wouldn't have put that together and unless we had actually done this experiment to see what was happening, I wouldn't have put those pieces together. And so we've learned today, one, it's not a good thing to clean up your messes after you do scientific experiments. <laughs> yeah. But two, <laughs> you don't really know what you're gonna find until you start testing things, until right. you start asking questions. Um, because again, I, I can go back to probably a million situations where I have spilled oil, I have saturated things with oil, where I've changed evaporator coils and I haven't done any kind of cleaning, um, thinking that I was protecting the evaporator coil. Well, what about plastics? What about um, you know a fan shroud or a, a fan blade that's plastic? Um, what about those things that are that are saturated in this oil um, in the airstream? You know, what other things have I come into contact that, that, that just kind of fall apart and disintegrate? We think, yes. well, man, these guys are making really cheap plastic. Well, no, we've been rubbing freaking an oh, oil that's yeah. eating plastic exactly. on yes. everything. <laughs> it's interesting that the mineral oil didn't do anything to the plastic at all. Yes. Uh, I thought that was quite, or at least this type of plastic. We, we don't know of every Correct. type that's out there possible, but that was quite interesting to me. I find that uh, very fascinating. 
we had a coil ch uh, compressor change out yesterday, mm -hmm. and the terminals had terminal venting, blew out, and blew the refrigerant charge and the black oil all up against the coil. And one thing we did is make sure that we cleaned the coil off because yes. we didn't want that acid eating away at the aluminum. Yeah. But you know, I wasn't even thinking about uh, what's happening to you know other plastics around. Now in that case, I'm pretty sure it was all metal. But other stuff in the systems, especially yeah. VRF that has plastic, you know, something as simple yeah. as a cable tie, or uh, you know, what about the, the pressure transducers? Yes. You know, we get oily hands and we touch that, or uh, you know, some of the other thermistors, some of the other pieces. There's a lot of plastic yeah. that we use today. And it makes me wonder, it's like, wow, we need to be a little bit more careful when we're working with the oil. Because I, again, I didn't, was not expecting this. Well, and I've had technicians fight me on uh, when a, a oil line ruptures on a BRF system and it blows the entire oil charge in the condenser on the roof. And so you think, okay, well, yeah, I have a bad compressor with bad bearings due to a lack of lubrication. I have, um, you know, a, a capillary line I now have to repair. I've got oil all over the roof. And what they do is they go in and they change the compressor and they do the compressor cleanup and they do everything you're supposed to, but no one has cleaned that unit. No one has cleaned that roof. Yeah. And, and guess what? We have now yeah. saturated it, uh, Molex plugs, uh, oh, quick, quick disconnection plug? plugs. Yes. We think about VRF, we have these fan motor cables that come down and connect to the board. Um, you know, I can guarantee you that it's probably the same type of plastic that we're using here that's going yeah. to brittle over time. And then guess what? Loose fan motor connections, right? which is going to cause over amping and they're eventually going to melt. And you're going to say, well, that was a lightning surge event, right? <laughs> right. What if it wasn't? What if it wasn't? Yeah. What if we have this embrittlement of the casings and the shrouds and the fan motors and the fan blades, and all the things in that system, like you said, um, you know, a couple cable ties break and a sensor comes out yeah. or, or, or a yes. sensor wire lands on a hot discharge line that causes it to melt. And then what's the insulation of the wires made of? Yeah. Are, you know, I know there's different types of material they use. So, it's usually uh, PVC from what I understand. From Yeah, so I know that at one time they were using one that was made from a type of uh, from um, soy, a yeah. type of soy for wires, and they were having rats getting the vehicles eating, eating the, the wires soy. up, <laughs> so they were having issues, like these unintended consequences. Yes. So the oil being in a system, you know, now has so many more questions, all the wiring and the connectors, like what's, what's the end game? And, and we don't know, so I guess the key would be and we don't know for sure, yeah. cleaning up the oil. Is there something we can use to get yeah. that oil off to clean it up as fast as possible? And what should we do on a roof? Yeah, no, you know, and this, and this, so this takes me back to um, my days of cleaning kitchen equipment on the roof, right? They put the package unit way too close to the grease hood. Oh, all and, the time. And the grease hood is just blowing into the side yes. of the outdoor heat exchanger. And you go there to wash it with a water hose and you're like, this dirt will not come <laughs> it off. It does not. Uh, and it's because of the amount of oil that's caked up over time. And so. We think about that, and so this takes us back to the using coil cleaners like degreasers, but understanding and reading the actual instructions. I know there's instructions on here. What? There's actually instructions on the bottle? That's crazy. Um, reading the instructions to understand the the actual things that it's going to come into contact with. Mm -hmm. You know, I had somebody the other day saying, hey, um, clean your electronic expansion valves, your donut style that goes around the body for aluminum clean it with a, uh, a specific type of rust inhibitor that, that eats away at the rust. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, what's in the spray? Right. And you look at it and you're like, wait a minute, there's a few chlorides in the spray. Right. So in at the cost of cleaning expansion valves, I'm now spraying acid yes. all over my coil. And guess what? The chemicals in this specific rust inhibitor also eats copper. Right. And it, now I'm creating leaks and it's right. like, how many times are we doing all these things, you know, without understanding the actual consequences of other, you know, other things it comes into contact with? And so the degreaser is one of those things where you've got to make sure that it's safe for rubber roof, right? Yes. You make sure that it's safe for aluminum or copper, whatever you may have you, you know, you forget that there's screws holding the rooftop unit down. And sometimes those are uh, different types of metal. It's there's true. other right. kitchen equipment that's made of aluminum. And so you can't just go in somewhere spraying an acid <laughs> or a base, <laughs> or a base. Of both sides of just the spectrum here. Exactly right, yes. Um, you know, willy nilly without understanding that, okay, if I'm gonna do that, I literally have to hose everything down with water right. to dilute it. But even then it's like, sometimes I have to let it sit or come back and wash it two or three times. And yes. so yeah. a lot of this comes back to understanding the chemicals we're using, the chemical reactions they can have. And this is one we did not expect. And understanding the consequences. And that's what we want people to do is not to memorize everything, because it's gonna be overwhelming. Oh, if I do, everything has a consequence. And it's true, it does. Yeah. We say, hey, be curious. Yeah. Just because a product advertises that it does something and it may actually do what they advertise, there's other unintended consequences. And like here we learned this 
you know, by accident, and this was fun and exciting, but, yeah. but it does help us to solve or prevent other problems. And that's part of the learning process is let's be curious, be interested in what's happening, and then ask questions. We spent a ton of time, well, mainly you, I spent a ton of time going through and researching about the different types of, um, the different types of, of plastics. And I'm over here looking at VRC, VRF parts, uh, you know, with all kinds of other questions, but it's that curiosity that yeah. leads us. And we want you to be curious, be curious what happens. Do your own research and yeah. find out what else oil reacts with. You may have questions, go find those answers yourself and then tell us the question what you found. Yeah. And we would love to hear that. No, and, and to that point, I mean, how many things uh, do we have now that were invented from accidental science? Yeah, plastic right? itself, right? <laughs> from what I, I understand, I, don't, I haven't researched yeah. it, yeah. But it's one of those things where just let your curiosity run yes. wild, but also understand, you know, once you go down that path, it's hard to come back. Yeah. <laughs> I can't leave oil anywhere now without thinking about the unintended uh, consequences that this has. I mean, I think about the, my clothes being saturated in oil and then coming home and then setting them on my floor, you know, touching something, right? <laughs> right. It probably broke because I actually <laughs> caused it to, you know, become saturated in this, uh, this oil that, that eventually ate it. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of really cool things to come out of this accident um, and a lot of great things to think about too, so. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.